Music can manipulate your emotions by reaching your heart without going through your brain. So I remember when I was six years old, I went to see Dumbo with my mother, and uh, I didn't really care about cartoons or elephants. I mean, I was playing piano all the time, so. But one scene that I remember, it was when we see Dumbo's mother holding him from inside the cage. And with that beautiful melody and the singing and everything, I start to cry, and so everyone else in the theater. Another one that I also remember is with E.T. at the end of the film. I'm sure all of you remember that melody. And then he's leaving, and then they don't want him to leave. And well, people were crying as well. And obviously, I was crying one more time. So I start thinking, like, what's going on? I was very young, but what's happening with me? Why am I having this emotion? So to solve the mystery, I began to explore and learn the language of music through film. So, but at that time, I used to play piano and flute, and I would have uh, friends and girls as well coming to my place and then inventing a story. And uh, I would start improvising um, with the piano the soundtrack of it. So it was a few years later when I realized how important is music and definitely changed my life. I went to Berklee College of Music in Boston. I studied film scoring and composition. And when I was there, I was diagnosed with cancer. So I had to come back to Spain and take the treatment uh, in Madrid. And uh, there were two things that I was dreaming of while taking the chemo. One was to record with a full orchestra, conduct my own music, and the other one was to eat Spanish ham, <laughs> as known as jamón serrano de bueno. <laughs> okay, so, so then uh, I always, well, I was sick for a week, and, uh, but my father was telling me during the process, like, Lucas, you have to see yourself in the future, you have to try to imagine yourself uh, you know, like doing what, what you love to do. So that's what I did. I went back to Berkeley, recovered, and when I was there, I started organizing and planning um, a recording with an orchestra. So I did this big triumphal piece, and we recorded with a full orchestra. No one did it before at Berkeley, and it was a way of beating the sickness that, that I had uh, before. But it was also, later, when, when I keep studying music, I was like, okay, this is my thing. I love music, I love film scores, so that's what I'm gonna do. So while all my friends, while I was at Berkeley, they were going out, having fun during the weekends, Friday nights, I was the weirdo going to the, to the library room, studying scores, and Chopin, and Young Williams. And it was just myself and the guy who was working there. And he was even like, Lucas, why don't you go and have fun? <laughs> but well, it totally helped me because it just by having that experience and the skills that I had from Berkeley and by studying a lot, now I do what I love, which is music for fun. So how do I work when I do a film? Um, the first thing is the story. So the story needs to tell me something. It needs to affect my emotion or it needs to give me something. And then once I, I sit with a filmmaker and I discuss it with him, then we go by the scenes. And I'm the one who translates the emotions to music, so he tells me, okay, I want something uh, like with a little bit of horror here, what suspense, and I am the one doing it. So I have an example for you guys. I brought a, a scene from a film that I did last year, so I'm gonna show it to you with no music. For example, I play a melody, like any melody, like whatever, like... 
So those three notes, right? So if this, what you saw was um, uh, drama and then it's the moment where, I don't know, they are like uh, falling in love or something, then by doing a different harmony with the same melody, I can do something like... So you are there with your popcorn, it's like... Oh. <laughs> But the same melody, right? The same thing. Maybe I can do something funny and he's walking and he's going to a, whatever, like a restaurant and, uh, and then... Oh, Peter, how are you today? Well, that's, that's more like a musical, right? So, for this scene that you heard, <laughs> I'm gonna show you now what it is to picture, okay? So uh, the filmmaker, he wanted something very dramatic. It happens towards the end of the movie and uh, I recorded with a full orchestra and well, you'll see what I did. music for films and to to manipulate the emotions of the audience when they go and watch films uh, by them being afraid, being scared, or being happy or falling in love all together but also it happened to composers as well. I remember this film that I did, it was a horror film a couple of years ago and uh, I used to, to compose at night. So I was there by myself with my team and the assistants, they were at home and um, had this horror uh, scene I was playing and suddenly there was this high volume, weird sound and I was playing it and I heard a noise and I was like, oh, what's going on? Then I okay, like, keep going and then, oops, the AC on again. I was like, oh, this is really weird. So after 15 minutes I left, I went back home and I changed my schedule. So now I work in the mornings. I swear, this is a true story. So the thing is that it also affects, you see how important and, and, and how music can can manipulate uh, emotions and that's what uh, it's all about and uh, I know that you know film composers we don't save lives and uh, we don't go to the moon but being able to touch people's hearts and fly them to a different emotional journey and every film that that we do I think is worth it so I'll keep doing what I'm doing until the music stops thank you mm -hmm.